Let's start with a pretty simple question. What's the area of this triangle? Instead of painstakingly dropping altitudes and performing those calculations, you might apply Heron's formula, for which you only need to plug in the side lengths of our triangle to find the area, which is much less painful. This leads us to Brahmagupta's formula, which extends this idea to cyclic quadrilaterals. Brahmagupta's formula states that the area of a cyclic quadrilateral is the square root of the product of the semi-perimeter minus each of the side lengths. Wow, that's so symmetric. Wait a minute, could we use that symmetry to prove this formula? Excellent question. In fact, that's a Conway, no, Conway level question. Conway too searched for an elegant proof that explained the symmetry. Unfortunately, there was no such proof for him to find. The two most common ways of proving Brahmagupta's formula involve either splitting the quadrilateral into triangles and then using trigonometry, or extending two of the four sides and then using Aaron's formula on the resulting similar triangles. Neither of these approaches explain the beautiful symmetry of the final result. In an effort to resolve this, we will be presenting a third geometric approach discovered by our fabulous math teacher, Dr. V. Awesome work, Dr. V! Now we'll take it from here. Before we dive into said proof, let's recall that the cyclic, or inscribed, quadrilateral is a quadrilateral where all four vertices lie on a single circle. Cyclic quadrilaterals possess a myriad of lovely properties, most of which we don't need for this proof. In fact, we only care about a pretty basic fact about cyclic quadrilaterals. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. In other words, the measure of opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. Now, we will begin our endeavor by developing an area formula for all convex quadrilaterals. We begin with our convex quadrilateral with vertices A, B, C, D and side lengths A, B, C, and D. We'll extend all four sides and draw the circles externally tangent to each side and the respective two neighboring extensions. We'll be left with something like this. Notice that the two pairs of segments highlighted are congruent. So the orange portion of the perimeter has the same length as this long orange segment. Similarly, the green portion of our perimeter has the same length as this long green segment. Cool, but what does that mean? Well, if we flip our diagram over this line through the centers of these circles, we can see that the long orange and green segments are equal. Since this pair of congruent segments together have the same length as the perimeter of our quadrilateral, each segment must have the same length s, the semi-perimeter. We know we're on the right track then, because Brahmagupta's formula involves s everywhere. Now, we know these two segments have the same length. In fact, if we flip this whole upper region, we can match these two whole pieces along this segment to reveal a rectangle with a side length of those segments of s. Labeling the radii of our circles RA and RC respectively yields that the area of our rectangle is s RA plus RC. Okay, now let's look at these blue and orange pairs of triangles on the left. If we flip these outermost triangles over in the same fashion, we once more obtain a rectangle. This rectangle has a width of C and a height of radius RC, yielding area CRC. Similarly, the blue and orange triangle pairs on the right yield a rectangle with area ARA. If we subtract these two areas off of the original large rectangle, we will be left with the area K of quadrilateral ABCD. Adopting Conway's convention of abbreviating S minus A as SA, we have K equals RASA plus RCSC. Performing the same calculations with these opposite sides and X circles results in the corresponding formula K equals RBSB plus RDSD. Awesome, we've reached the launching point for our proof of Brahmagupta's formula. For the next step, Recall that tidbit about cyclic quadrilaterals, that opposite angles are supplementary. That means that the measures of any red angle and any green angle add up to 180 degrees. By symmetry, we observe that the segments from the circle centers divide their respective angles in half, 
which means the measures of an angle in yellow and an angle in purple sum to 90 degrees. Thus, these two triangles are similar. Sweet! We'll see that these two triangles and the ratios they provide will completely unlock the mystery of Brahmagupta's formula. Recall that we want to show that this area, K, equals the square root of the product SA, SB, SC, SD, or that K squared equals SA, SB, SC, SD. Since we want a K squared term, it makes sense to multiply our two expressions for K, seen here, yielding this formula for k squared. What we need here is for the r terms to somehow disappear, so the whole sum can collapse into a single term. Here's how we're going to make that happen. In this diagram, we've color-coded the eight right triangles formed by the x circles into two sets that are orange and blue. We just showed that all these blue triangles must be similar, and the same argument shows that all the orange triangles are also similar to one another. Thus, we have these following sets of ratios. We want to get rid of the radii terms in our formula. To do that, we cross multiply specific pairs of fractions. Thus, we have products of radii in terms of side lengths. We'll be needing all eight such products. We substitute in for each instance of these products, yielding this. That was really lovely, but did we even make progress? Yeah, we have way too many terms, and it seems like we're missing something. Where even is SD in the diagram? That's valid. Now this is the home stretch, so we're going to bust out some really cool stuff. And you're right, we haven't yet found SD in the diagram, but it's actually hiding in plain sight. Recall that these green segments combine to yield semi-perimeter S. We know D1 plus D2 equals D which means a1 plus c2 equals s minus d, so a1 plus c2 equals sd. Similarly, b2 plus d1 equals sc, and so forth. The four radii products resulting are thus rarc equals a1c1, raca equals a2c2, rbrd equals b1d1, rbrd equals b2d2. Equating those first two yield a1c1 equals a2c2, which yields this fraction. In other words, those points of tangency divide their respective sides proportionally. Now we add one to both sides. So a2 over a1 plus one equals c2 over c1 plus one. And we combine those and rearrange. Now if we plug in for SD, we get that SD over A1 equals A plus C over A. We then isolate A1. Looking at our whole diagram, we see that A1 is next to the side of length D and is part of the side of length A. So we can guess that B2 can be expressed like this. Repeating these steps shows that our guess is correct. Now we plug in and finish our calculations. And now we're done. I hope you enjoyed watching this proof and that you maybe learned something. Thank you for your time.